Chapter 28 There were over a thousand passengers aboard the New Amsterdam, and most of them clambered onto the decks and anxious to get a first glimpse of their new country. Dominic and the others had to wait in a long line by the stairwell. When they were finally able to make their way up the steps, they had to squeeze their way to the deck's railing. An awed hush fell over the crowd as they sailed into the Hudson Bay and caught their first glimpse of the New York skyline. Many of the passengers gaped over the deck's rails, having never seen a building higher than two stories. At the sight of the Statue of Liberty, everyone became silent. With her torch held high, her calm strength standing firm against wind and water, she awed everyone and moved many to tears. Dominic stared at his favorite statue and felt his own tears welling in his eyes, for he finally understood just how much her welcoming and powerful presence meant to the immigrants who had come so far. "'It's good to see you again, Lady Liberty,' he whispered as they sailed past the towering figure." Staring out at the New York skyline, Dominic couldn't believe his eyes. Everything seemed so short. Where were his old favorites? The Empire State Building and the Twin Towers were nowhere to be seen. In fact, most of his favorite buildings were gone. He realized with a shock that this was indeed what New York looked like in 1908. It's not New York, he gasped. Sure it is, a man standing beside him said. No, not my New York, Dominic whispered under his breath. The realization that he might never see his New York and his world in his own time gripped him with fear. If Francesco and Antonio were to live in New Jersey, then Dominic would be living alone with yet another strange family in New York. But this would be the New York of 1908. Suddenly he felt the old familiar feelings of loneliness sweeping over him. Only this time they were accompanied with a new fear. How was he to fit in to a new family in such an old time? It had been easy with Francesco and the others, but what if this new family wasn't nice to him? What if they didn't like him? Who could he turn to for help in the New York of 1908? It took hours for them to disembark onto the Hudson River Pier. Antonio began to get restless, and Francesco and Dominic took turns carrying him on their shoulders. By the time they reached the pier, everyone was anxious to feel solid ground under their feet once again. No one complained of the long wait for the ferries to arrive, for it was a relief just to not be bobbing up and down on the boat. Dominic watched as thousands of faces passed by, crammed onto the decks of many steamships and ferries that choked the harbor. A ferryman called out a command in English. Dominic and the others could not make out his words, but they could see his hands directing them onto the gangplanks. In a crush of baskets, boxes, and suitcases, they were all packed onto the ferries for the ride to Ellis Island. There was another long wait before the ferry's engine started up. As they began to move, Dominic remembered his last ferry ride over to Ellis Island and how very different it had been. He remembered just how much room everyone had aboard the ship. He had actually run on the decks. No one had been dirty or hungry or sick. Everyone had just been, wear had been wearing clean clothes, and people had laughed and joked. No one was laughing now as he stood squeezed between an old grizzle-faced man, that smell of cheese and vomit, and a woman carrying a crying baby who smelled every bit as bad. Bundles, boxes, and bodies pressed against him as Dominic struggled to get a breath of fresh air. When the castle-like facade of Ellis Island came clearly into view, a cheer went up and the air crackled with excitement. Such a palace, Antonio marveled. They really do live like kings and queens here, a woman beside them whispered. A wave of goosebumps rolled across Dominic's arms as he stared at the horse-drawn carriages and carts that lined the docks. Meanwhile, anxious conversations had sprung up throughout the crowd as the immigrants nervously eyed the imposing buildings on the island. The button-hook men are the worst, Dominic heard a boy behind them say. They turn your eyelids inside out with their hooks. Why do they do such things? Antonio asked, turn around. That is how they look for disease in the eye. 
It's part of the bacteria, what they put you through before you are allowed into the country, came the whispered reply. Antonio began to rub his eyes fearfully as they followed the crowd off the ferry and into the long line that snaked its way up to Ellis Island's main entrance. Everyone was talking about the battery of inspections that was given to weed out those who were not fit to enter America. What if we do not pass the inspections? Francesco asked nervously. Don't worry, Dominic assured him. Just answer the questions the way the ticket agents told us to and everything will be all right. The ticket agents, who worked for shipping companies, had already gone over these questions with their passengers, feeding them the correct answers. For any immigrant not accepted into America was sent back at the shipping company's expense. But now, standing so close to their dreams, with so much depending on each answer, everyone grew worried. What if we make mistakes? Francesco whispered anxiously. What if we don't give the right answers? Antonio, don't stick your tongue out like that. You don't want them to think you're an idiot. Don't think about it so much, Dominic said, trying to sound confident. After waiting for a long time, Dominic and Antonio sat down in line, too tired to stand any longer. They were under the canopy leading to the building's large doors, leaning against a big pillar. Francesco reached into his pocket and pulled out Salvatore's gold key and chain. He put the chain around his neck. Dominic's heart leaped at the sight of it. The key! You have the key! he cried. Dominic leaned back against the pillar, dumbstruck. With so much happening, he had forgotten to ask about the key. Dominic lowered his head, sadly, and placed his hand over the key. Dominic leaned in closer, as Francesco said in a whisper, I will wear it for you, Salvatore. I shall keep it close to my heart until my own son can wear it.